I was interrupted. These demons were. Anyway, um, it says verse four: If you do these, if you do this thing, indeed, then shall there enter into by the gates of this house king sitting upon the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, and uh, he and his servants and his people. But if you will not hear verse five, I'm going to verse five. If you not hear these words. I swear by myself, said the Lord, that this house shall become a desolation. If they don't want to hear the word of the Most High, GMS, ISUPK, ICG, JC, Tazadakia, and this whole wicked ass crew, GMS, the house of Israel, the house of David, shield of wisdom, Nathaniel 7, what's going to happen to them? It says that, I swear by myself, says the Lord, that this house shall become a desolation. The Most High is going to destroy them in a caps. It's going to be a purging. It's going to be a destruction. Brothers need to, brothers and sisters need to run from them because they know they're lying. If you don't, you just go fall with them because you believe in those lies too. Now let's go to the next scripture. Um, we're going to go to um, Ezekiel. Ezekiel 22, and I'm going to start at verse 7, and I'm going to drop down to 29. Okay, Ezekiel 22, verse 7, it says this about it. I have thee, in thee have they set light by father and mother. This is talking about, in verse 6, Behold, the princes of Israel, everyone were in thee to their power to shed blood. And thee have they set light by father and mother. In other words, they were disrespecting the father and mother and cursing them. And the midst of thee have they dealt by oppression with the stranger. And that's what these demons do right here. They dealt by oppression with the stranger, telling them they can't be saved, telling them they can't believe, like the Zabak in the house of Israel. They can't be saved. They're going into slavery. Tell them they can't be forgiven and be given for their sins. What does the Most High say in verse 7? It said, They have dealt by oppression with the stranger, and thee have they vexed the fatherless and the widow. Okay? So now let's drop down to verse 29. It says, The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and needy. Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. That's wrong what they doing. They oppressing a stranger. What are they doing? Oppress means, it means to afflict, to crush, to force, to distress. They oppressing a stranger wrongfully, telling them they can't be saved, telling them they go make it to the kingdom as slaves, telling them they uh, go, can't be forgiven of their sins, they can't repent. You understand? They're oppressing the stranger world. Now, we've been oppressed, too. Israel is being oppressed by the wicked of the nations also. We've been oppressed, too. So we supposed to come back and do the same thing? Damn, demons. Let's go to um, Malachi chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Malachi chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Just look at his face. They look like a demon right there. They don't look like no righteous man. Malachi chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Let's say, And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers. That's the Bach and Rakah, sorcerers, wizards, and against the adulterers. A lot of brothers be kept men whore them in adultery, adultery with these uh, other women of other nations that don't even believe. Okay? And be committing adultery to other brothers' wives. Okay? And against the uh, adulterers and against the false swearers and against those that oppress the hireling and his wages, the widow and the fatherless that turn aside the stranger from his right. And fear not me, says the Lord of hosts, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So the Most High didn't never change. The nations always dwelt with us. 
these brothers try to use the scripture to say, well, the Most High don't change, so these Gentiles are really Israelites. No. That's some demonic stuff that you just said. We just read all throughout the whole Old Testament from Exodus even unto Abraham that the Most High always dealt with the Gentiles and always had them be a part of Israel. Okay, so that's nothing new. The Most High didn't change. That the Gentiles was a part of his plan from the beginning. He just started with Israel first. Then he let the Gentiles come in. So it says, and that turn aside the stranger from his right. Okay, so the Most High didn't change. He always dealt with the Gentiles. Okay, let's get that straight. Okay, let's go to Deuteronomy, back to Deuteronomy chapter 24. In verse 17, Deuteronomy chapter 24 and verse 17. Okay, this is a lie once again. This is a demon that has the mic up to another, another demon holding the mic up to him. Okay, these are devils. If John the Baptist is right here, Christ is right here, and the apostles is right here, and the prophets, they'll be blasting them. Okay, they're rebuking and checking them. Okay, so let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 24. And um, we go read verses 17 to 19. Deuteronomy chapter 24, verses 17 to 19. It says, Thou shalt not pervert the judgment of the stranger. What do they do? They pervert the judgment of the stranger. That's perversion. They're going into slavery. You just perverted the judgment of the Gentiles. A remnant of the Gentiles are going to make it. Okay? It said, Thou shalt not pervert the judgment of the stranger, nor the fatherless, nor take a widow's raiment to pledge. Okay? It said, But thou shalt remember that thou was a bondman in Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee hit thence. Therefore I command thee to do this thing. When thou cuttest down the harvest in thy field, and hast forgot a sheaf, in the field, thou shalt not go out again to fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow, that the Lord thy God may bless thee, the stranger meaning the Gentile nations, that the Lord thy God may bless thee and all thy work of thine hand. So the Gentiles are to be blessed by us. They get benefits too. You don't leave them that sheaf or the benefits after the Most High bless you, then how you going to get blessed? That's why these brothers are cursed. Okay? GMS, ISUPK, Tyler Docket. These brothers are false prophets, cursed, false apostles, deceivers, and being deceived. The white man is going to slavery. No, they not. They just going to be destroyed. A remnant of them are going to be servants in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Now, let's go to the next one. The next one is Deuteronomy chapter 27 and verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 27 and verse 19. It said, Cursed be he that perverted the judgment of the stranger. Curse. Johannes is cursed. GMS is cursed. ISUPK is cursed. House of Israel, House of David. Why are they cursed? Because they pervert the judgment of the stranger. How are they perverting the judgment of the stranger? By saying he's going into slavery. By saying they can't be saved. By saying they can't be forgiven of their sins. By saying they can't repent. Okay? That's how they pervert the judgment of the stranger, by not teaching them the truth, by telling them they can repent, by telling them by, they can receive forgiveness of sins. Like it says in Acts chapter 26, verses 15 to 18. Let's go to Amos right quick. We'll go to Amos. Okay. A lot of brothers get this scripture wrong. They break it down wrong, don't have any understanding because they're jealous and mad and angry. Okay? Amos chapter 5, I mean, excuse me, Amos chapter 9, verses 11 and 12. This is Amos chapter 9, verses 11 and 12. It says, In that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. Remember, David was over the whole nation of Israel. Okay? The tabernacle of David means the kingdom of Judah that has fallen when the kingdom was split, okay, during the time of Solomon, and close up the breaches thereof, and close up the division thereof. I mean, he go come back and unite the whole nation together. 
and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. Now this prophecy you're going to see go come to pass in the New Testament. It said that they may possess. Possess means to inherit, to enjoy. Look it up. It comes from the Hebrew word yarash, to possess, to inherit, to enjoy. Okay? The remnant of Edom, so a remnant of the so-called white man, so-called white people, are going to be possessed by Israel. How? In the gospel, in eternal life, in righteousness, in immortality. They're going to be our servants in the kingdom. In righteousness, though. And, uh, and of all the heathen, so a remnant of the heathen in Edom, which are called by my name, meaning the Most High is going to put his name upon them. He's going to call them and put his name upon them, put righteousness upon them, give them the Holy Spirit, eternal life, give them the gospel. And they're going to be called, uh, they're going to be with us in the kingdom, with Christ in one body, which are called by my name, says the Lord that doeth this. Now let's go to Acts. Let's go to Acts chapter uh, 15, and we're going to start at verse 14. And this is what apostles say it came to pass. It says, Simeon, which is Simon Peter, has declared, Acts chapter 15 and verse 14, how at God at first did visit the Gentiles in Acts chapter 10, when Peter went to go to the Gentiles and visit them, and to give them the Holy to speak the gospel to them. And when he spoke the gospel to them, the Holy Spirit fell upon them to take out of them a people for his name. So a remnant of the people of the Gentiles was taken out of the Gentile nations for the Most High's name. So they can glorify the Most High and be in the kingdom with us and worship him. To disagree the words of the prophets as it is written, after this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David which is fallen down and I will build it again, uh, again the ruins thereof and I will set it up. That's the same thing Amos said. I'm going to read the next scripture, the next scripture on the next one.